Welcome back to Tom's Gear Rods again, boys and girls. Ooh-wee. Today, 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 we are going to winterize a few of my mowers. I used them a couple times this season. That's the one I use right over there. I use that one. I don't winterize that one because I use it several times during the winter to mulch leaves and stuff. But I don't. That one and that one and that one. I don't use these for nothing really. I used them a couple of times this uh, spring to cut a feller's grass is the reason they're, I, I took them out of winter uh, winterization earlier this year and they've been sitting in the shed. So we're going to winterize. I'm going to show you how I like to winterize. I'm not going to change the oil or anything. But I'm just going to drain all the fuel, clean the carburetor out. I'm not taking it off and cleaning it. I'm just cleaning it out, drying it out, just like it was if you bought it off the shelf at the store. So next time you want to use it, all you got to do is put fuel in it. And you ain't got to worry about whatever fuel's left inside of it going bad and having to clean it then. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop this cover and this cover and the backing plate off so you can see what I'm doing. Let's slide this thing back and get it in some light. Yeah, a little bit better lighting over here. I'm just going to pop this cover off in this. That way you, the carburetor is exposed. Okay. Okay, okay cover off don't get these back on there very tight that little insert right there i think it's brass or whatever it is it'll actually pull out it's molded into this plastic and if you run this thing down real tight it'll just pull that thing right out and you're and you've ruined the back of plate you have this one's auto choke which don't have the primer if it did, I wouldn't be taking this off. Because half the time I take this off, you you break the seal and it won't prime anymore. Let me grab my little tool. I'm going to take this uh, fuel line off. Before we do that, I need my little metal pipe I like to use. And I've got it out there on the Z Master. So let's go out there and do that one first. Because I want to get that one done because it's kind of drizzly out there. I've already I've already had the uh, fuel tanks draining. They should be empty by now. I emptied both of these tanks. Shine the light in there and see. Yep, she's nice and dry. this thing's going to sit all winter and i don't even have any plans on using it next year or any year for whatever that matters what i've done was where the two fuel lines come together into a t and it comes to the fuel pump i took yeah it's done draining now i just took and unhooked it set this pipe somewhere i just took that hose off going to the fuel pump and that's all I had to do. Then I turned the fuel on. Now let me see if I can turn it off with one hand. There we go. Now the fuel's turned off. I mean, it's, it's turned off, but there's nothing in it. Let me lower this camera down. I want to show you, show you what I do here. I'm also going to unscrew the bowl and drain whatever's in the carburetor. And I'm going to squirt the carburetor with the carburetor cleaner because that stuff evaporates really quick. Okay, here we go. Okay, there's the bowl on the carburetor right there. So what I'll do, I've already got the little cylinder. Let me grab some uh, carburetor cleaner. Oh, 
Oh, I should have grabbed my knee pad too. Okay, I'm just, see, I just un unplugged that. It takes a really thin 13 millimeter. See, I put this on the grinding wheel and really made it thin. Some of these are 12 millimeters, some of them are 13. I cranked this thing up, let it run for about five minutes earlier this morning. So, what I'll do is just take this and let whatever's in there just dribble out. Let it dribble, dribble, dribble. And then I'll take my carburetor cleaner. I can get it in there. Take the straw, stick it in that hole right there. Spray it up in there real good. And while we're letting that drip dry, ooh, let me squeeze through here. While we're doing that, I'm gonna, I figured this two gallon can would be big enough to drain whatever was left in there. And it is almost full, so. And I'll put this fuel here in the shop and use it for customer stuff and all that good stuff. Well, I'll sit right there and put it together wrong. Yeah, there we go. I don't forget how to put a gas spout together. Okay, we'll get this secure and get it out of the way. Oh, good. What I'll do now is stick the fuel line back on. It goes, it goes in that little holder back there. That little fuel line holder, bracket, clamp, whatever you call it. All right, we'll just take it and stick it back on the fuel pump. I left my pliers laying in there. I'm, I'll come back out. I'll come back out and put that back on. Can't forget. So let me go ahead and finish putting that anti-backfire valve back on. Solenoid. I'm glad the bowl stuck. Now we'll just screw this back on. And uh, there we go. Kind of hard to get in there, Ted. If I can get it to move just a little bit more. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to get your wrench in there. Let me stick around Michigan right here, see if I can get in there. I don't want to take a chance on bending this linkage. I just need a little bit more. I need a little bit more. Well, that's, it'll be pretty near impossible to get this wrench in there. There we go. Get it pretty snug. Spin this back around. This will swivel around a little bit wherever you need it to be. All right. All right, the fuel is drained, the bowl is drained, I squirted carb cleaner up in it. Put it all back together, I gotta remember that clamp right there. Put the, <clears throat> put the gas caps back on there, that one's cracked. <coughs> okay. Okay, what I'll do now, I'm going to raise that seat, and get the battery out of it, take the battery, put the battery in the shop, on the shelf, that way it don't get so cold out here this winter and die, I don't like it being hooked up anyway. Raise this camera back up a little bit, bring it around here. 
me set the camera right there because this is kind of difficult to do the way I've got it sitting. Where's that lever? I guess that's it. Where's that lever? There it is. Hey Well, I got everything just crammed in this carport right here. Okay, let's pull that battery out. Ooh. Take the negative off first. Ooh. I think I used this mower Oh, maybe once or twice this year. And that was earlier in the spring. Put your nut and bolt back in it. Go, go, there we go. That's all there is to it, if I can get my leg back. Ooh. Okay. Whew. That one is winterized. All the fuel's been drained out, nothing in the tank, carburetor's drained and cleaned and dried. Battery, okay. I'm going to grab my stuff. I'll come back out and grab that gas can and the battery. I got too much stuff in my hands. Oh boy. About the same principles with this one. Same principles. Alright, let me grab my little pan. This is very quick and easy to do, and it'll guarantee you you won't have any problems come springtime. But I think the best thing to do is just crank it up and use it for four good times during the winter. But if you know you're not gonna use something, I know I'm not gonna use these. I'll just stick these in the shed. In case anybody needs them, they can use them. Or they can have them, I don't care. I ain't got no use for them. It's just stuff I've accumulated over the years. I gave a fellow a, a nice little Honda push mower last month. That one he brought me, he brought it to me twice. That thing was just a piece of junk. I was out here. You deserve this one. I even went to Home Depot and got a brand new set of blades for it before I gave it to him. So take this one, sir. You deserve something nice. Okay, take the lid off. Let that drain. Take you a half inch wrench. It's so much easier to get to when you take that off. Let's see, where's my half inch ring? There it is. Somebody stole it. People don't understand. A lot of customers, they bring me something. They tell me, I put fresh fuel in it. Is that going to take loose? But they don't understand this holds a, God, what, three or four ounces of fuel, and it goes stale quicker than what's in the tank. I'm just going to let that drink. Well, let me grab a rag. Ain't no sense in making a mess. Just let that rag soak it up. Soak it up. Get on him, boy. Gasket stayed on there. I'm gonna put it back together just like it is. Well, let me squirt it first. Spray everything off, let it dry, and it's going to take a wipe the bowl. Now we'll try to get it back together. Sometimes, especially on Tecumseh, this float will fall out and the needle will fall out. And that's why I try to have the bowl stick to the carburetor so none of that happens. And sometimes it can be difficult to get this thing to thread back in there because 
you're looking down at it at a weird angle and it's hard to get it to go straight in. Okay. I see the tank is finished drying. Get the bowl snug. I should have. That doesn't look like it's, it's just an illusion, I guess. But anyway. I couldn't drag my air hose out there to do this to the Z Master, so I'm just going to do it to this one. Just take a little puff of air. There we go. That's all there is to it. Now we'll just stick it back together. But if you wanted to go ahead and take the time to change your oil and sharpen your blade, maybe replace the air filter or blow it out, it'd be an opportune time to do it. That way you are ready for the spring. But, I mean, this one's got a brand new blade on it, a brand new air filter, and I just changed the oil earlier this year, so I know it don't need none of that. Same with the Z Master, and the same with that one sitting over there on the floor, that Husqvarna over there. They stay in a good state of tune. That's why I just want to drain the gas, because I know they're going to sit. I have no plans on using these. Ever. Now be gentle with this, like I said. Ooh, that's good. Oh, boy. We'll pop this cover back on. Gas cup. I do that every time. I guess because it's black and you can't see it sitting on top of that black engine. Be extra careful with this because this is going in plastic. All right. That one is winterized. It can sit up there for five or six or ten years, and all you'd have to do really is put gas in it. Gas and go, baby. That fuel's been in there since the spring. Look how yellow it's already turned. Whew. All right, turn the table for the next victim. Set everything over here. And the same way with the the two tractors I have sitting here. That one's got a 19 horse single cylinder intake. This one's got the 20 horse Briggs uh, twin. Same thing. If I was going to winterize this one, the bowl is right there. Unplug it, unscrew the cylinder oil, let it drain, then unplug the fuel line from the fuel pump. Just let it gravity drain. It'll be all right. Okay, let's get this one down and get the other one on the table. But before I forget, and it's going to bother me to no end until I do it, put that clamp back on there. Let's do it. I got to get this gas can and the battery. Yeah, I ain't going to be able to carry all of it. Let's see, I just want to reach around here and... I wake up at two o'clock in the morning and realize I forgot to do this and I'd have to come out here at two o'clock in the morning and put this clamp back in there. There. Now we'll take the gas can back. We got two gallons of decent gas here. I can put this gas in my other 36. Over there. Let's see, we'll set this on the table here. here. I can't remember to get that. I can't. I can't forget to remember to get that battery. I can't remember. I can't forget to remember. I remember to forget. Whatever it is I'm trying to say, and I believe y'all probably know. Back in the shed with you, big boy. All right, 
Same principle with this one. This one's going to be a little easier. I don't really have to take nothing apart because the fuel line and everything's exposed. Everything is exposed. Set this flashlight here and light up what we're doing. You can get this in the auto parts store for just a few bucks. Stick it on that fuel line and crimp it off. Any other part store, Walmart, anywhere. Let's see, I'm gonna reach around here with my long needly nose. And... I'll tell you, the only thing I don't like about this Husqvarna, you've got one lever and all four wheels will adjust the mower. But they put this big old bar right here in the way of everything. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Get that fuel line off there without hurting it. There we go. Get my little pipe. Get your pan. Yeah, that way if somebody wanted one of these, man, all I gotta do is say, here we go. Put some gas in and go. I ain't gotta say, well, let me look at it. Let me see, check the oil. And Clean the carburetor, get it running again for you. Gas and go, baby. Pop the gas cap off so it flows faster. And we're going to have to have that half inch wrench back. Half inch wrench. Grab a rag because you know it's going to dribble everywhere again. Dribble everywhere again. Sometimes if I have a good enough customer, you know, they come to me a couple times a year, I'll be nice enough to, hey, at the end of the season, just swing by and I'll do this for you real quick. I won't charge you nothing. That way, you'll be ready to go for a springtime and then they'll bring it back, you know, for a little change. And just a little perk I like giving customers. Okay. Let that drain. Yeah, somebody just give me this one. I clean the carburetor and dip the thing to it and give it a good service and it runs just great. So it's rear wheel drive, awesome, awesome mower. I feel like I'm doing a used car ad or something. This is a great one here. We took this on trade two months ago and it's a cherry. <laughs> Let's see if we can maneuver our fingers and get this back in there just perfectly. Sometimes this can be a real booger to try to do. Yeah, I think we might have it. Make sure that gasket's on there, seating good. If I can get my finger to hold the bowl on there, I'll get my other two fingers to tighten it. I should have used that little quarter inch ratchet with a socket on there. It's easier to get to than well, the bottom of this bowl on this one's flat. You can get an end wrench on it, but that other carburetor on that other Quantum over there, it's, it's indented, and you can't really get the box into the wrench up in there real good. You'll end up rounding it off. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn it around, because... Well, I ain't going to do it like that. Can't find it. Ooh. Ah, man, that's pretty snug there. Let me double check. Yeah, this one still has the plastic on there on it was new. Let us peel the plastic off. Okay. That one is finished draining. And this is all you gotta do, just get all that fuel out of it before it goes bad. That's all you wanna do. I'll pour that gas in my big 36 over there, it don't matter. It, it's like Mikey, it'll eat anything. 
that bar. <laughs> Another one went torized. I'm gonna let them sit out in the yard and dry for a couple of hours before I cram them back in that shed, man. These things are gonna stink up the old shed of shame out there. Ooh, well, all right, boys and girls, that's how you winterize. That's how I winterize my stuff. If I need to use it, just put gas in it and go. Ooh, let me get that battery. I'll wake up at 2 o'clock this morning thinking about that battery. I have to come out here in my bloomers and get it. Put this on the battery shelf in here. I may go ahead and let it trickle charge overnight on 2 amps. Because it was awful weak when I tried to crank that thing for the first time in about 2 or 3 months. Earlier this morning. Yep. That's the battery shelf over there. Battery charger's over there. Well, all right, boys and girls, thanks for watching another Tom Louie video and listening to me rambling and ranting. Today's a Sunday, and I'm just bored out of my mind. Got to find something to do. I always got to have something to piddle with. Well, man, I will catch you boys and girls on the next one. Love y'all.